Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen's coming to you guys with seven non-sweet fall fragrances. So this is a bit of a fragrance rotation video. It's been a while since I've done one of these and this was actually requested quite a while ago from one of you out there. Sorry, it took me so long to get to it. So yeah, the theme here, fragrances that you would wear most often during the fall months, you know, when it starts to get a little cooler outside that don't rely on a heavy dose of sweetness. Now, I'm not saying each one of the fragrances that I talk about today has absolutely no sweetness whatsoever. That's actually pretty rare as far as wearable fragrances go. There's usually at least a little bit, a little touch of something in there. But these fragrances, I think most of you will agree, are not fragrances that are heavily sweet. They don't have huge doses of vanilla or heavy sweet boozy notes or sweet spices or... Uh, things like that. So, with that out of the way, let's jump into this. Also guys, uh, let me know in the comments below a fragrance that you think is great for the fall that's not too sweet. Maybe it will be on this list, maybe not, but let me know some of the ones that you guys think, because maybe I missed one. First fragrance is one that I think most of you out there will have heard of if you've watched YouTube videos on fragrances for any amount of time, especially big bang for your buck, cheap fragrances, you know, videos like that. It's from La Lique, and the fragrance is Encre Noir. You could also go with potentially Encre Noir All Extreme or Encre Noir Sport, but I feel like for this video, Encre Noir, the original, is the one that works best. Has vetiver, cypress, cashmere, and musk. This one, very dark, woody fragrance. And to me, like I just mentioned, one of the best bang for your buck fragrances out there. You can pick it up for next to nothing from discounters. Bottle looks very nice, and the fragrance smells much more expensive than what you're gonna pay at discounters. Now, if you buy it at retail, it's gonna be considerably more. And at that point, not quite a bang for your buck, but at discounters, thumbs up. This one gets compared to Chanel's Sycamore. And while it's not the exact same as Chanel's Sycamore and between the two, I would take Sycamore over Encre Noir. If you smell them side by side and you say they have nothing to do with one another, I would question what you're doing. There's definitely a similarity there. Uh, Encre Noir, fantastic scent. As I said, very dark. And if you're just now getting into fragrances, maybe it wouldn't be for you. Uh, personally, when I very first sprayed this on years ago, I really just had a moment where I was like, wow, that smells awesome. Or at least it was probably, it was, it was probably something like that. I remember being really impressed. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Encre Noir, definitely fragrance that's not gonna come across really sweet. I mean, I've told you the four main notes. None of those are, are particularly sweet. Cypress, vetiver, cashmere, musk. Awesome scent though. Great. If you've never smelled it, check it out. Up next, a bit of a throwback, a little more of an old school fragrance from the house of Halston, Z14. This one draws some comparison to Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, which is much more expensive than Z14. If you wanted to, you could also go with that one if you wanted a higher end, uh, better smelling overall fragrance than Z14, but if we're talking just straight up bang for your buck, C14. Cinnamon, cypress, leather, lemon, oak, moss, some of the notes in the fragrance. Bit of an old school note break down there, but it is still wearable. This isn't one of those fragrances that when I smell it, I go like, oh, that would never work today. It still can. As I mentioned, Tom Ford Italian Cypress, a very high end fragrance in the private blend, has quite a similarity to Z14, and there are plenty of people rocking that one. So if you like Z14, don't be embarrassed. Go ahead and wear it. Now this one does have cinnamon in there and cinnamon does have a little bit of sweetness, but I don't think it's overdone. I mean, this is a bit of an old school fragrance, as I said, so it's not gonna be uh, that type of cinnamon that you might find in some newer releases where it's got kind of like a you know, sugary sweet edge to it. Z14 is a fragrance that has been reformulated. If you want to, you can Google that and dive into the rabbit hole, though I suggest not doing it. If you've never smelled Vintage Z14 and you buy a newer bottle, you won't have anything to compare it to and it won't matter. 
So out of sight, out of mind. Up next, let's talk about a fragrance in the house of Montal. Now Montal is primarily known for oud fragrances, uh, sometimes screechy oud fragrances. If you don't know what I'm talking about, buy some <laughs> and then uh, we'll buy some samples actually, I should say, and uh, check them out. You know, buy original ouds, something like that, and spray it on. Or red oud or one of the other many, many oud fragrances they have. Uh, it's kind of an acquired taste, I think, some of the Montal Ouds. Uh, once you smell them enough, you get used to it, you know what to expect, and it's not a big deal. But if you're a beginner, like a true beginner, and you dive off that diving board, probably not going to want to go back in that pool. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Anyway, who cares about all that? The fragrance I'm actually talking about today isn't even a nude fragrance. Um, it's a vetiver fragrance. Red vetiver, actually. And this one gets compared to Hermes hair dermes. Vetiver, grapefruit, pepper, and cedar. Some of the notes in the fragrance kind of lets you know right there what type of scent this is. It is primarily spicy and woody. A bit of citrus there in the opening. Again, draws comparisons to Terre Dermes, though this is basically Montal's take on it. Good performance, great projection, great longevity. Montal, a house that you can typically find for a good price from discounters, so those are all positive things. And this one I find very wearable. And also, not too sweet. So it works for this list. If you are a fan of the Hermes and you want a little twist on it, check this one out. It's really good. From there, let's go to Azaro, the house Azaro, and the fragrance Visit. This one, another inexpensive one, draws comparisons to Gucci Rush, which is a fragrance I love. It's discontinued though, unfortunately. I don't think Visit is as good as Rush, but I don't think that most of you out there would be happy paying the prices that Rush goes for. Otherwise, I would just say Gucci Rush. Just leave it at that. I love, love that fragrance. But if you're not familiar with it, if you didn't wear it back in the day before it was discontinued and you don't know whether you'd like it or not, just don't even bother. You're setting yourself up for sadness. This one has incense, cedar, nutmeg, pink pepper, and uh, really the cedar is what draws that comparison to Gucci Rush, or the main thing that draws the comparison. This one, to me, very overlooked. People don't talk about it. Uh, people don't really seem to wear it ever. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if this down the road a little bit just you know disappears from discounters and uh, nobody ever cares again. For me, great dumb reach fragrance as the weather starts to get cooler, like right now and uh, one that reminds me of a real love of mine in Gucci Rush so when I wear this one personally it's when I want a similar feel to Rush but I don't want to actually wear Rush because uh, every time I spray the bottle it's like there's a dollar there's another there's another okay next fragrance again going back a little bit old school going back to 1984 for this one it is Tuscany from Aramis and this is another fragrance that you will have some people who say when it first came out, it was better. It's been reformulated. It's not the same. It's not as good. You know the drill, all that good stuff. Like I said uh, earlier in this video, if you did not wear it back then, and if you don't have strong memories and feelings about how it smelled when it was first released, the current bottle is going to be just fine. Lemon, anise, lavender, leather, caraway, some of the notes in this fragrance, it opens up with kind of a barber shoppy feel. Not a big surprise, lots of fragrances from the 80s did have that barber shop feel. That clean sort of uh, feeling that you would get after a shave, you know, that talcum powder and everything. Yeah, you get that vibe in the opening of the fragrance. Some people will compare it to Azaro Pour Homme, which is one of the all time great barbershop fragrances and this one does have that vibe in the opening as it dries down though it changes not quite so barbershoppy and the dry down actually starts to get more leathery with some oak moss in there some patchouli so those notes actually <laughs> they're pretty prominent in the 80s if you know 80s style scents but this one really good not too sweet still wear there is a reason it came out in 1984 and it's still being sold now let's go to a creed fragrance the house of creed probably the most well-known entry-level niche house if you want to call it that 
it's not that the fragrances are super simple or anything like that it's just they're easy to wear they're the type of niche fragrances that even if all you've ever worn is aqua de joe you can most likely pick up a bottle of creed depending on which one it is but more than likely uh, pick it up spray it on and still be like oh yeah this is great i can wear this the fragrance i'm going to talk about today tabarome millicene and this is actually not one of my personal favorites uh, from the house but i know it does have a lot of lovers out there it has ginger tobacco sandalwood uh, bergamot ambergris as some of the notes in the fragrance now i know that most people are going to say this is a tobacco fragrance and they're not really wrong but when you think of tobacco what you're thinking of most likely is not the type of tobacco that's in this scent so when most people think tobacco they start to think pipe tobacco, sweet tobacco, honey tobacco, stuff like that. The tobacco here is more like a fresh green tobacco, if that makes any sense at all. And uh, it really melts with the ginger and the opening, and that's what most people remember from the fragrance. As it dries down, you have that Creed Ambergris, which you're gonna find in so many of their fragrances, along with some sandalwood. This one is very wearable, easy to pull off, when you can dress up easily, wear in classy situations, formal situations, to the office. Very versatile, not the type of fragrance that's gonna pull much hate from anybody. Like I said, not one of my personal favorites, but for this time of year, one of Creed's best. And if we're talking about a Creed fragrance without much sweetness, probably your best bet. And let's wrap everything up with a Chanel. I'm gonna go with Egoist. This one also has sandalwood and tobacco like the last fragrance, but it has rose in here. It's got cinnamon, it has rose wood as well. This fragrance, to an extent, to an extent, seems to be a little bit divisive. A little bit love it or hate it. For me, a love. It's got a spicy, woody opening. It's got bits of mandarin in there as well. It dries down to be a, a very smooth fragrance with a real emphasis on that sandalwood. This, like some of the other fragrances, is another one where you're gonna find some people who say, oh, you gotta get it from this year or before, or this year or before, or that year, or whatever. Uh, another one of those fragrances. But I think even if you have a bottle produced here in the last couple years, you're good to go. Don't worry about it. Fragrance is great. Very classy, high quality, like you would expect from Chanel. The opening for some people is the part that kind of turns them off, actually. The dry down, more people seem to universally love. So just be aware of that. If you check this fragrance out in store or something, if you've never smelled it before, you spray it on and give it a quick smell, don't immediately write it off. Could be one that you want to wait for the dry down before you pass judgment. And this one does have a little touch of sweetness in there, but I think not too much, not too much to put it over the imaginary threshold. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Seven non-sweet fragrances for fall. Each one of these, very easy to wear, very versatile, great for the changing seasons. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there.